The other day, I got an email from a father. Dear therapist mommy, we have an outgoing lively teen girl whom we gifted a smartphone on her 14th birthday. She downloaded and started using all the latest apps to chat with her friends. She slowly started expanding her circle of online friends and added a few people she had never met. One of those friends, a boy the same age as her, asked her if she would like to meet him in person. She said yes. And then she went to meet him without informing us and her friends. When she arrived at the coffee shop, uh, she saw that he was much older than her. She got scared and without saying hello to him, thank God, she got back home safe. Thankfully, she told us all this and we didn't scold her. But we are extremely worried. We wanted to ask you for your opinion on this. What do we do now? Dear Daddy, it's not uncommon these days to find social media taking over the lives of our kids. While it has its advantages, of course, social media use can take a harmful turn as it almost did in your daughter's case and it can really start to impact the teen's mental state and well-being. Your job as a parent is to help your teen use social media wisely. Your job is to teach her how to be safe online and this is how you can do it. First of all, understand why a teen seeks out adventure and excitement. At this age, our teens lack the mental ability to process risk and consequences of what they only are viewing as innocent flirtation. Online friending is nothing more than a virtual reality, a concept that a young mind can fail to grasp. A virtual bond that she has created is like any young crush. Common sense flies out of the window. Here are some things you can do right away. First one, stay calm. I know the protective tiger parent in you probably wants to jump out. But first, gather as much information as possible about the stranger. Check her device for messages exchanged between her and this person and take screenshots. Ask questions. It will be important to find out if pictures have been exchanged. Report your concern to the platform or service and block this person from the device. If you feel it is warranted, contact the police. All of this will be distressing, of course. Perhaps the most important tactic is to approach this matter with your daughter and not at her. Why did she feel it was safe to meet him? What proof does she have that he is who he says he is? Ask a lot of questions. Don't tell. Your child needs to feel that they can share without fear. Second, the best defense is a good offense. There are thousands of predators online every day. Your daughter will meet online friends, but good judgment is necessary in today's world. Talk to her and be an active listener. Be aware of her behavior and check her phone regularly. Your actions and words give the message that her safety is important to you. Now, here are some things that you can do with your teen in an ongoing manner, right? Teach her to navigate risks. Talk to your teen about what can be done if people ask her for her personal details, if they are mean or abusive online, if they post embarrassing photos of her or share information that links back to her. Discuss with your teen the dangers involved in sharing personal content and information, including images of her that others share or posts and images that others tag her to. Discuss behaviors of online predators. Talk to your teen about the typical behavior of online predators. They will often feel out a situation before asking for personal information. If the teen shuts it down early, they're likely to give up. Sometimes they'll say they already have something embarrassing to blackmail your teen into sending pictures and this is called sextortion, right? But sending more never stops the harassment. It only increases this. Talk to your teen about it. Teach your teen to set boundaries. It's helpful for your teen to practice setting boundaries. Discuss with your teen that while it's nice to be polite if someone knows it, you in real life, you don't have to be nice if they aren't respecting your limits. It's better to block than to be nice and better to be safe than to be sweet. Have safeguards. Avoid apps that make contact with strangers easily such as Tinder or Kick. Talk to your teen about a plain simple rule of thumb. If you don't know them, don't friend them. Equip your teen with some answers that she can give when a stranger contacts her online, such as not responding at all or typing, I don't want to talk to you, do not contact me again. Use privacy settings. Go through privacy settings of your teen's social media accounts together to make sure your teen understands each one. Also explain that passwords are there to protect them against things like identity theft. Your teen should never share them with anyone, even a best friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whoever, right? 
Teach your teen to speak up. Help your teen realize the importance of reporting anything inappropriate and blocking or unfollowing people that post negative stuff, yeah, like ne negative comments on uh, others or their timeline. Uh, tell them to block people that make them uncomfortable or harass them in any way. Teach your teen to play nice. Teach your teen that no one has the right to harass or bully them based on their sex, race, age, orientation, personal beliefs, values, etc. Talk to your teen about avoiding engaging in cyber brawls on Twitter and status face-offs on Facebook or Insta, which are pointless, but they may also result in broken friendships. Teach your teen that if they have a personal issue with someone, it should be kept off the internet. Support your teen in developing good judgment. Trust your teen and encourage them to develop good judgment through their own experiences. Tell them that you are there for them if they need to share or confess. Online friendships that blossom quickly may seem attractive, but explain that good friendships take time to develop. Explain that if someone, whether it's a friend or stranger online, is urging them to do something that they're not comfortable with, they should use their better judgment. Having open-ended conversations rather than wielding authoritarian control enables your team to build the critical thinking skills needed to make smarter decisions online and in real life. And for you, be aware, teens who are in emotional distress are especially vulnerable because they crave positive attention and connection. So if you notice your teen withdrawing, being secretive or hiding online interactions, it's time to ask some questions. And finally, one don't for you, don't snoop on your teen. Snooping on your teen's social media activities looks very different from monitoring them. You can of course befriend your teen on social media depending on their age, but be aware that they're likely to have platforms uh, where they use false identities uh, that you may know nothing about. Like I'll give you an example, Finsta. Finsta is actually a fake Instagram persona where your teen can create a fraudulent identity and post things that you may never know about. Or they may have five Snapchat accounts or several Twitter accounts. It's more helpful to trust your teen and talk about this with them in an ongoing manner. I hope this helps you daddy and I really hope that you will follow all the strategies and guidelines I've shared in this video. Please share this video with other parents as well because God knows who will benefit from this information. Thank you so much. This is The Therapist Mommy signing off.